It is a privilege to get to visit with Coach Patrick Daverco, the head football coach for the Concordia Bulldogs today on the summit. The Bulldogs coming off a big victory on Saturday, 29-17, a win over the number two Northwestern Red Raiders. Coach, overall view of the game, obviously it's a big win. You guys moved to four and two now on the season. Uh, definitely going the right direction. We've talked about that a couple of times during the summer, how the program continues to go the right direction. But you're seeing even more of the results right now. Love to hear your thoughts on the win on Saturday. Yeah, I thought it was just such a great team effort. You know, you, you, you hear coaches say stuff like that, and it kind of goes in one year one year and out the other because you hear it sometimes. And um, But, you know, our, our offense um, put our defense in some tight spots at times. Um, our, our, uh, our special teams bailed us out of some situations. You know, we, we rose to the occasion offensively when we needed to. Um, played in a, uh, you know played and called an aggressive game and the guys really uh, responded to it and so it was really encouraging to just see uh, every facet of the of the of the team. We did not play a perfect game, and um, but it, but it wasn't like a miracle. You know we we were definitely just happy to um, to have the outcome. You know that the effort is always there um, with our guys, but uh, sometimes the, the outcome doesn't turn out how you want it to. And so to see the outcome match the the effort level was really fun. Well, 29 points proved to be enough. And, and I realized then you put more points on the board. In the other three wins, obviously, you've, you've been able to put a lot more points on the board than in this one in particular. It proved to be enough. Defense was the order of the day, though. And it, it looked like your defense really shined, holding Northwestern, the defending national runners-up, two years ago national champions, to just 253 yards of total offense and really stifled the run game, just 52 yards on the ground for the Red Raiders. Yeah, I think that's a, a huge testament to the work that's been done in our in our trenches. You know, our defensive line, Devon Pauley and uh, Carson Fellhopper, who's Conference uh, Defensive Player of the Week, and uh, Kyle Stirrup and, and that whole crew of defensive linemen, um, I think – you know, it, it starts and ends in the trenches, and I think that that's just that was indicative of Saturday. I also like Coach Osen and I, uh, our defensive coordinator and myself, we used to both coach on the defense together. Uh, now I'm, I, I kind of float more, and I'm more on offense. And, and so for for uh, for our defensive staff, between Coach Osen and Coach Lonnie and, uh, you know, Coach Coach Nichols and Kroom and uh, Shipley and Jackson, all those guys are just doing such a great job. Um preparing our guys every week. And I think our guys just did a really good job. Our, our leadership is great in our locker room. And um, to be able to have guys uh, who are seniors uh, get to experience a win like that was just really satisfying. Was It was a big win over a quality program and a program uh, in Northwestern that obviously there have been some changes on the offense from you know the start of August to where they are right now. They've, they've made some adjustments there. But uh, a win on the road like that big, and it was a team that to this point in the season, well, prior to Saturday, had not thrown an interception. You all picked off four on Saturday, including Dalen Henson, who picked off two by himself. Talk about the, the effort there from the secondary. Yeah, I think that our, our secondary has, has taken some lumps in, in some games. And so to be able to um, – have them rise up to the occasion and, and just play the way they did on Saturday was really satisfying. Um, it, it makes it really difficult um, to move the ball on you. If, if, if you can throw some, uh, throw some confusion their way. And I, th I thought uh, we did a good job of that on Saturday and then just being opportunistic, you know, we, we didn't, we weren't dropping interceptions. You know, we were, we were capitalizing on the opportunities and that's something that we had talked about uh, throughout the course of the week of practice. And, um, and leading up to the game was just, we don't need to do anything crazy here. We just need to uh, be us. And, and, um, you know, we talk about uh, seizing the opportunities that we find throughout the course of the game. I just, we talked about it on the field during pregame. And I thought the guys really did a good job of that. And um, that was fun to see it. We're visiting now with Patrick Daverco, the head football coach for the Concordia Bulldogs here on Midwest Sports Net, where we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel. We'd appreciate that here. Coach, it was an upset 
at least on paper. Let's start right there. It, and, and realistically, you look at the numbers there, number two team in the country uh, had not lost to another GPAC team other than Morningside in, in a while either. And you're playing on the road. Northwestern had a 20-game home winning streak there in Orange City as well. So from those perspectives, obviously, it's an upset. And I don't want to downplay that, that vantage. But the, the flip side of it is, from my viewpoint and, and you know, watching you all in, in last year, this year, coming into this game, just felt like something was brewing there. And, and you guys have been trending upward for a while. And it was just kind of like, you know, the, the dam's got to break at some point in time. There's going to be a big win that happens sometime soon. And, and I think that Saturday was one of those. So your take on that, that perspective. Yeah, it's, it's funny because it, it doesn't play out, you know, our timing is not God's timing. And, and I'm thankful for that. Um, you know, it, it's, it's good to see you think of uh, of seniors who have come and gone and didn't get that that game that big win um and, but who put the the effort in uh to to probably be in position but we just didn't make the plays and um and, and so you think about guys who come through the program and just work so hard and then they, they didn't get to experience something like this um but but this locker room is is very special in that they're not content um no one was shocked in the locker room. I think we, we shocked a lot of people on Saturday. I can just honestly say that our locker room wasn't shocked. We were excited, but we weren't surprised. And so um, it, it's fun to get to ex experience, uh, you know, just the joy of achievement uh, with your guys. And um, because you put in a lot of work and you put in a lot of time uh, to make sure that you get it right, whether it's uh, the off season lifting or recruiting or um, you know, all the hours that you put into it uh, as a program. Uh, it was just fun to see it pay off on the scoreboard. I have a bye week coming up. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Then following that, uh, a rivalry game, another game on the road. As you head to Doan, that is not this coming Saturday, but Saturday to follow. I talk a little bit about the rest of the season. Still a way to go as you have four more games in the regular season, but you're you're putting yourself in a position to be playing a little bit later on. Yeah, we definitely feel like our, our resume uh, for the for the postseason is um, is where it's we're in a good spot for it. You know, I think anytime you can go on the road and beat the number two team in the country, um, it, that's saying something for you. We're four and two. Um, Thirty percent of our schedule is against the top uh, top ten opponents. And, um, you know, I, I think if you look at our conference and how it stacks up uh, nationally, uh, this is a very strong conference. I think it's something like eight out of the last nine national champions, uh, national championship games have been uh, represented by the GPAC conference. And so I, I really, I, I believe that we are a, uh, a, a conference um, or a, a playoff worthy team. And I, I hope the Raiders see it that way as well um, come the end of the season. But, it's, it's a little bit too early to talk about any of that stuff I, because we have, you know, we have a, a, a cross town, not cross town, cross the interstate rival uh, coming up here in, in our next, next time we take the field. And, and then uh, there's no easy skating in the GPAC any week, anything can happen. And so uh, we're just uh, doing the next, next right thing um, and uh, taking them things one day at a time, man, I sound like a, a coach right now, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what you got to do, you know? Well, no, and, and I like that, Coach, and, and uh, I, I, I would never put words in your mouth, so I, that's why I'm, I, I want to say I, I'll talk about it. I'll talk about the playoff picture, and, and I'll, I'll leave it to you to go game by game on that. I completely understand where you're coming from. I, I, you have a bye week this week, and, and I appreciate you taking some time with me today to talk about the game on Saturday, but uh, you, you have a little bit of opportunity then uh, you know, I don't know what your 24-hour rule is on that, on on thinking about the game and going on to the next one. But the the flip side of it is, you have a little bit more time. What's a bye week look like in Seward? Uh, it's uh, it, it's we get caught up on some things around the office. You know, you, 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 as once the season starts, you go, okay, that's not a pressing issue. I'm going to do that over the bye week. And then <laughs> you do that enough, and then your bye week gets pretty busy. Um, but you got to take a little bit of time. I, you know, we gave our guys, uh, uh, the day off today. We're giving them the, the, the weekend off this weekend and, uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And, um, we, we have a bi-week, uh, kind of protocol that we follow. 
uh, that we feel really good about. Um, I'm going to get some, uh, our storage room in our basement. We, we need to put up some, some drywall. And so like I'm, Emily's got me pretty busy, uh, <laughs> by week and, but she's, uh, <laughs> so I'll, 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 we'll get, I'll get to spend some time with my kids and my wife. And I'm, I'm just really looking forward to that. Um, being able to, uh, we'll, we'll take the kids out of school this afternoon and then we're going to go, uh, do a little family outing and you don't get to do that very often during football season. And it's, it's a beautiful fall in Nebraska. And, uh, and so we're going to take advantage of that a little bit too. And really excited for it. Absolutely. I love the human side of it, coach. That's very important. And, and coaches are, believe it or not, coaches are human as well. So I, I appreciate hearing that from you. The Concordia Bulldogs, four and two now on the season, coming off an upset win over Northwestern 29-17 on Saturday. Big victory for the program, and it's a program that we said in the summer, I did anyway, that uh, you were trending the right direction, and the evidence is there to justify that at this point in the season past the midway mark. Coach Patrick Daverko, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit. We always appreciate it. Appreciate you coming on the channel. An open invitation as always. Awesome. Thanks, Joey. Appreciate you having me. Go dogs.